Hello, and in this third tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some problems that have occurred uh, with the grading nodes and how we can kind of debug those. And in the process of doing that, what we will, what I'll probably be demonstrating is really how to actually properly implement these passes uh, and doing it in a slightly more, more robust way than we have. OK, so uh, this is kind of really an opportunity to kind of pull out some problems that can happen with a comp. So. Um, if I look at this grading node, I'm going to look at this grading node 4 here, and I'm just going to manipulate this. So if I just go and adjust the gain, uh, I can adjust that gain without affecting the rest of the image. But if I start looking at the offset, what will happen is um, uh, I can go darker, but if I go lighter, I start to have problems here. And if I remove the black clamp, that also starts to give me problems. So what's happening is I can't adjust this without actually affecting the rest of the image it's not just uh, affecting just the um uh just the the area of the ball or the diffuse of the ball it's affecting other parts of the image as well and this is the case for all of the grading nodes as well so let's if i just demonstrate let's say with the shading nodes. so i'm just going to click on this uh grade here for the shading and again if i manipulate the offset you can see that we, we're having a, a similar problem okay so let me just set that back to zero okay uh, and get us back to a neutral point here. So what's causing us a problem here is that the images that we have coming into this comp are from Arnold. And those images are what we call pre-multiplied images. Now, um, what that means is that each of the color channels has already been multiplied by the value in the alpha channel. OK, now the reason for that is to actually kind of save computer processing time inside the compositing tool and to allow the merge nodes to work quicker. But the um, uh, but the sort of side effect of doing that is that if, when you go to grade it by um, what, what happens is because you've actually multiplied uh, the color channels by the alpha, um, they don't behave as you would expect when you start to grade them. So the short kind of um, uh, this kind of short rule here is or uh, well, the shorthand rule here is that for a pre-multiplied image and you can go on the Internet and look up more information on pre-multiplied images to get a kind of better understanding of what a pre-multiplied image is. But the short kind of uh, rule is that a pre-multiplied um, uh, when you're using the grading nodes, you want to give the grading nodes a straight image, i.e. an image that is not pre-multiplied. OK, so an image where the RGB channels have not been multiplied by the alpha layer. OK. And when you go and use a merge node, what you want to do is you want to give the merge nodes a pre-multiplied value. OK, now. Actually, you can go into Nuke and you can kind of click buttons within these nodes to kind of get around this issue as well. But I'm going to show you how to get around this issue using uh, the pre-molt node and the un pre -molt node. OK, so what we're going to do is we'll take this uh, first channel that we we're looking at. OK, and what we're going to do is we're going to un pre multiply it. OK, so I'm going to put in an un pre molt node and that will take that will, that will remove the pre multiplication. It will effectively uh, reverse that calculation that was done. Um, uh, and put it back to what we call a straight image, i.e. the true RGB values and and uh, uh, and an alpha channel. OK, um, and then what we want to do is we want to uh, then what we want to do is we want to um, uh, then pre molt that before it goes into the merge node. So we're going to go into the merge node and we're going to put the pre molt back on. OK, so what that means is uh, while the unpre multiplied image is, um, uh, uh, so what happens is we've got a straight image for our grade and then we've got the pre multiplied image for our merge just like we want it. Okay. Now, this has caused us a strange sort of problem here and that's caused the ball to go black. Okay. Uh, and what's actually happening here is, um, uh, is, uh, we've got a slight issue in the way that we've shuffled our RGB channels, or more specifically, the alpha channel. So if I click on here, I'm just going to double click on here, and we can see I'm looking at this shuffle node now, OK? And what we'll see is we what we've actually done is we've shuffled, um, we've actually made, um, because there was no alpha channel in the diffuse indirect uh, layer, um, what we've actually done to create an alpha channel, we've actually just uh, duplicated we just put the blue channel inside of the alpha channel here okay 
But actually what we want to do, uh, but what that's doing is it's causing confusion because when we actually apply the pre-molt again, it's not, uh, it's not pre-multiplied by the original alpha that was uh, used in our scene. Okay. It's pre-molting it by this blue channel, which is basically resulting in this black sphere. Okay. So what we need to actually do is take the original alpha. So the, so the alpha that was in the original RGB layer inside this e AXR image and put this back into the main, into the alpha channel that's coming out of this shuffle. Okay. And the way to do that is simply to select RGB here and simply select the alpha here. OK, and what you'll see is it corrects that problem. So what we need to do. Uh, so just to recap to um, uh, to correct the problem, what we need to do is we need to apply the um, unpre. We need to unpre multiply it before we start grading, then pre multiply it before we start merging. And then uh, we need to make sure that we're pre multiplying by the original alpha mat. So that was the uh, alpha channel. That's the alpha channel that's in the uh, the. Um, the original RGBA layers, not the not something inside the diffuse layer. Now, just to prove that this is working now, so if I go back to this grade four node and start looking at the offset, I can actually start manipulating this. Okay, and you'll see that I can start manipulating this, and it's not affecting the rest of the comp. Okay, and so really, what I want to do is do a similar thing for these other um, uh, these other. Uh, um, um, channels that I'm grading. Okay, so any channel that where I'm doing a grade, I need to do this process. If I'm not grading the channel, then I don't need to do this process. The straightforward pre-multiplied image goes in there. But what I would advise you to do is for all of these shuffle nodes is actually go through and just do that correction. Make sure that the RGBA, uh, the alpha from the RGBA layer, the original RGB layer is coming through. Okay, so I'm going to do that for every single one. Just double click so it comes to the top and uh, correct it. OK, so I'm just going to correct that for each one. And then where we've got these grades, I'm just going to simply add a pre, uh, sorry, unpre -molt. OK, and they're quite simple to add these. Uh, note how I select the um, uh, the actual node uh, above where I'm going to put it in first. And uh, that allows the computer to automatically or nuke to automatically just put the uh, node in below it. OK, so I'm just going to go on pre -molt and then add in the pre -molt. OK. Now, with this shadow one, I just want to demonstrate just one more problem that we've got here. OK, so um, if I, uh, yeah, um, now it may be that by default, uh, your grade node has black clamp turned on. I'm going to turn that on, OK, just to demonstrate something for you. Uh, now, if I go into the shadow and I try to kind of I want to make this shadow darker and I do that by moving this offset down. What you'll see, nothing is actually happening in our comp. Now, the reason for that is because I've clamped the black values. And what that means is uh, I cannot output black values that are negative. And actually, for the most part, that is um, a very useful rule to, to have in place. So typically by default, the grade node will have the black clamp turned on. So I'm just going to check that by pressing G. Uh, so I've just created new grade node here. And yeah, by default, the grade node has the black clamp turned on. Um, and that's quite understandable because a negative value in black doesn't really make sense. OK, and you could argue that that's not really a clean thing to be doing in your comp. OK, but as you can see, we're using these plus nodes here to combine the light. OK, and so if we actually want our shadow to actually take away from the light, actually make something darker, um, we're going to have to actually add a negative value, effectively subtracting. OK, so uh, in this case, uh, the negative value does actually make some sense. So I'm going to go back into this grade six node uh, and what I'm going to do is turn the black clamp off. And you'll see by turning the black clamp off, I can actually uh, control that shadow. I can make that shadow a lot more aggressive. Okay, if I want to. Okay. There we are. Okay, and it may be that I want to kind of refill in. I might go back to say the diffuse and uh, uh, push that up just to kind of fill in where the shadows uh, removing here. Okay, but it allows me to have more control over my shadow. Okay, um, great. Uh, I've probably been a little bit aggressive with this, uh, but I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. Okay, there we are, and I'm gonna, let's just, 
something like that. Go back to our gray node. Uh, just have it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so what we've done there, just to kind of make our comp more robust so that we can grade it without breaking it, is we've basically made sure that the um, alpha channel uh, uh, the, the alpha channel coming out of these shuffle nodes is the original alpha channel. And before we do any grading, we are unpre multiplying it and then pre multiplying it. Okay. And then obviously to give us more flexibility in the grading, we're removing the black clamp just where we need to do that. Okay. And the final thing that I've done as well is I've actually, um, uh, I've actually, um, exported a, a Z depth, um, uh, layer to this. Uh, so just to show you that, if I um, just connect this directly to the viewer, and I'm just going to look at the Z depth uh, value now. Um, if I can go depth Z here. Okay. And it looks like there's nothing there, but actually what I've got to do is turn this right down. Okay. I'm going to turn the, um, uh, uh, the uh, aperture of our viewer right down. Okay. And if I continue turning it down what you'll see is we actually do have a depth image here okay and the way i generated that if i went into maya and all i did was inside of the uh, render settings so this is beyond the tutorials that we've already done i simply in the aov channel all i did was um with the built-in aovs i just added the uh, z group so i've already added it there if i just go back you should find it in here and you just add it in okay uh, and then you close it, do your render again, and you'll have this um, Z layer, okay? The important thing to be aware of is when you look at it in the render view, or if you look at it inside of Arnold, you do need to turn the exposure right down in order to see it, because they are very small values, okay? Great. So now that I sort of proved that this does exist, I just want to return this viewer back to uh, a sensible value. So I'm just put that back to a one, I think is the default. Um, and I'm going to get the viewer uh, to, uh, again, look at our um, uh, merge node. OK, uh, let's have a look. Uh, and I just want to turn it back. Uh, so it's looking at the standard channels now. Great. OK, so now what I want to do is um, before we actually do our merge, I want to do a uh, Z depth. OK, so I'm going to go and uh, go tab. And there is something called ZD focus. OK, and I'm going to use this depth image to actually um, adjust the focus of this ball. So I can actually make this ball look out of focus um, as if it was um, shot by the same camera that shot the background plate. OK, so here we are. This is our ZD focus. And you can see that we're just feeding our image into here. OK, uh, and what should happen is. Uh, we should have our uh, Z uh, layer coming through in this uh, shuffle copy. OK, uh, let's go into here. You can see it's automatically picking up the Z depth image. OK, um, uh, uh, and let's just check that that is there. So what we can do is we can if I go into the output and look at the focal plane setup. OK. And in fact, we can see it's already having an effect. If I look at the result, you see it's already having an effect and blurring the ball here. Um, and just also a word of warning, it does, uh, this will slow down the uh, process. And it's quite a heavy uh, node to use. So uh, once you've got this fine tuned and perhaps you're working on other parts of the comp, um, what I tend to do is disable it. So just to speed up when I'm working on other parts of the comp, just by pressing D, you can kind of disable it. You see there's an X there when it's disabled and then you can kind of re-enable it as well. OK, so what I want to do is I just want to look at the um, uh, image that's coming uh, out of here. In fact, sorry, I just want to look at the uh, uh, the result here. So I'm just going to go into focal plane setup. OK. And this is telling me um, what's in focus and what's out of focus. So if my recollection is correct, um, uh, anything that's red. So what we're seeing here is red. Anything that's red um, will actually uh, it means that it's 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 closer to the camera than the focal point. OK. Um, uh, so what we need to do is we need to one of the first things we need to do is establish 
where the focal point is. Now, I can actually um, I can actually specify that uh, by uh, putting a value into this uh, focal plane here, and I can say the distance uh, that something in focus should be from the camera. Um, in order to do that, I need to know a bit more about my image, and I need to know what that distance would be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. An easier way of doing this is I can actually uh, move this focal point. So this focal point is here by virtue of uh, this Z focus being open in the property window. OK, if I actually close this, you'll see that that focal point disappears. OK, so by that being in the property window, that focal point appears. And if I move that over our ball, OK, what happens is it's saying our ball is now the center of focus. OK, and what this is doing now is it's saying, OK, the it's saying um, uh, it, what we're now seeing is we're seeing a red area and a blue area. And actually, I think I was slightly wrong about the red area. The red area is showing me areas that are further away from the camera than the focal point, And the blue area is showing me the areas that are closer to the camera than the focal point. And then there's a green area in here, which is um, which is probably too small to see. I'm wondering if I can get in here. Very slight green area here, which is the bit that's in focus. OK, and what you'll see is our depth of field here is really quite narrow. So to make that work, I need to kind of expand this depth of field and this will put more of the ball in to focus okay so with that done what i can then do is turn off the uh, uh so go back to viewing my results rather than the focal plane setup and let's see what we get and you can see that the ball is far more in focus okay and you can see that this part of the ball here is in focus and the edge of the ball here is out of focus okay um what we can do then is we can uh, we could make the depth of field larger or another option is we could actually just reduce the size of the blur that's being applied to the out of focus area and that's this value here so if i turn this down let's have a look what happens uh, not quite the response i was expecting One of the things you can find is this doesn't necessarily update as uh, quickly as it should. Let's just try that again. And um, the uh, so this um, defocus node wasn't quite responding the way I was expecting. And the reason for that was I needed in this math node because I'm uh, dealing with an output from Arnold. Um, what I need to do is the way that Arnold is encoded, I need to select um, depth in this box here. OK, and what you'll see is uh, this will then start responding the way that we would expect. Might be worth at this point just going back into the focal plane setup, uh, which is still kind of what we wanted to have. Um, maybe I could move this focal point a little bit, something like that. OK, let's try this. Um, so I'm going to go back into my results. Sorry, clicking the wrong uh, elements here. I want to just flick this one. OK. Uh, and again, if we have a look in here, uh, if I if I become a little bit more aggressive with my uh, comp now, you can see that I can turn up the blur here. And give this more of a blur. Let's let's just compare that if I turn this off. Again, okay, let's try that. Probably need to make it a smaller depth of field for this to have an effect. Okay, so to demonstrate this, I've had to be quite aggressive with my depth of field setting. So 
Um, really what I've done there is actually make the depth of field really quite small and actually make the size of the blur that's being applied to the uh, elements that are, and, that, and, and this is the size of the maximum blur that you should understand. Okay. So the maximum blur, blur um, quite large. I've had to be quite aggressive here because, um, uh, because the, the, the way that, um, the scale of, uh, my Maya scene is quite large. So the distances are quite large values. So that means that I have to end up being a little bit more aggressive within um, uh, within uh, this node to get the results that I want. If you model things at a slightly smaller scale in um, uh, in, in Maya, uh, then you find that you have to be less aggressive. Um, so maybe an option to kind of look at what units you're using in Maya to kind of make that a little bit easier. But uh, you can still get the effect. You've just got to be more aggressive with the values that you're putting in here. So just to demonstrate that, if I press D now, you can see that uh, uh, you can see there is a blur being applied to it. You can see there's a blur being applied to the edges and you can see where it's still in focus in the middle of the ball. Um, now, uh, that may not really be exactly how we want in the in this comp. Uh, I'm just kind of making this a bit more aggressive in terms of blur uh, than we normally would. Um, purely in order to demonstrate uh, using the Z depth value. So obviously what you would probably do is you may keep the depth of field like this, but you'd probably t tone this down a little bit um, uh, uh, to be uh, uh, so it had less of an aggressive blur. OK, um, another thing you might want to consider doing uh, to uh, uh, integrate these elements together is also adding uh, noise to this. So effectively, what you can do is you can um, apply what we call gain to your um, 3D composite because your 3D composite is being uh, is a, a perfectly crisp rendered image uh, compared to the background video, which is being shot on a sensor which has noise on it. OK, so what you want to do is add noise or gain to your um, 3D model in order to kind of match the noise or gain that maybe in your background image. So what you're trying to do is almost degrade the render. Uh, so all these processes that we're doing, we you know apply motion blur to your render, uh, defocusing your render, um, uh, and putting gain on there is to kind of make the 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 uh, foreground element that you're adding match the quality of the background element that was shot. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is put a gain in between here. So this focus, we put it after the shuffle copy because we want to actually uh, make the focus affect the alpha layer as well. Um, so it's a more natural blend. But with the uh, gain, we want only want we want to apply it before doing the shuffle copy. We don't want to apply, we don't want the gain to affect the alpha channel that's coming into this sh shuffle copy. OK, so with that selected, I'm just going to type in gain. OK. Uh, and there's a really useful uh, fact. Is it called gain or grain? It's true. Do grain. Here we are. Grain. OK. And this allows you to apply the sort of grain that you would get from a uh, codec, um, ca uh, codec film, different forms of codec film uh, to your image. OK. So let's have a look in here and see what we get. Now, what you'll see is this grain is a little bit too aggressive for what we want. You can see, actually, when we look at these sort of areas here, there is a bit of gain. There's a bit of grain on uh, this digital image that we've we've got here as well. So actually putting a bit of grain in here is, is a good idea to try and make these comps match up. Um, so again, I'm just going to dial these down. Uh, one of the things I would note is you can skip through the different presets. I would just tune what we've got here. Uh, one of the things I would note is notice how um, the green, uh, sorry, the blue has got significantly more higher intensity of grain on it than the other channels. And the reason being is traditionally uh, blue light is like a weaker light. It's a weaker signal. Um, so that tends to be in the blue channel is tends to be where you have more of the noise or more of the grain. So that kind of makes sense in terms of what we're trying to get. So we want to keep this kind of curve, but obviously tune all this down a little bit. So I'm going to go and uh, do something like this, see what we get. And what we're looking to do is try and match up um, the grain that's on the ball with what we see here. And that's not bad. I might just turn it down a touch more.
Okay. And I think that's kind of giving us kind of a nice sort of natural, uh, uh, you know, combining all those elements is giving us a nice sort of natural comp now. Okay. So um, that's my tutorial. What we're trying to do is just take the very basic comp that I'd done before and look at how we can kind of make this uh, more robust. So we've got more flexibility in our grading and actually add a few things like grain and Z depth to really allow us to kind of integrate the uh, this 3D element into uh, this shot. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.